Hey guys, this is a big, long, long continuation. Going through a whole book here. Ten minute videos at a time. It's a long time to stand up, a long time to hold this phone steady. I need to see a machine in its original color. And back then, that was original. That's a good looking. I like those back tires. Of course, we only take a minute of respect for the ones I like, but it's kind of biased. Sort of like the tires. Guide for American buyers in Canada. Wave a couple of your greenbacks and we'll grovel at your feet. Ours still aren't worth anything. Great all. Too exciting on that one. Yeah, Washington, Oregon, you're looking at our five axle there that's been obsolete for decades and thinking that looks like a pretty good truck you could work today. Here you could drive around this province probably steady and never see one again a five axle it's a shame they're neat neat trucks that's probably why you guys' trucks last so long down there not hauling double the loads and the weight that these ones do timber jack I actually had one of these work, about two properties over here when I moved here in the early 90s. I did a little logging job, a couple over on the next dead end street over here and had one with a grapple on the front. Even then that was a rare sight. If anyone knows of 528 cats in British Columbia or around, you can't bring them across the border now probably because the emissions, but if anyone knows of one sitting there that sort of runs or is sort of half of one piece, I have a buddy that would probably be interested. A C500. Heavy duty, twin steering boxes. I made one called a, there's a 418, I believe, and even it's a big machine. That's real big. Boom design cylinder thing's a little different, a little bit different. Not because they're inboard mounted, they just look close to the fulcrum point in there, but seems if you're going to design it, the pin is up there, seems if you're going to design it for lift with that long of a straight boom, you'd probably want the pin, it's up there, you'd probably want it out another foot. You probably want the cab on the other side in this day and age, too. But they had to start somewhere. And there was.
There was a point a few years ago which I, w which I wish they would have ended somewhere instead of keep plasticking and computering and censoring them. I live in the world where it affects me. All bush cats out here, these ones. They don't usually guard a pointy cab like that. I had a pointy cab, 1989, a brand new, different brand, and they would have followed the arc, followed the bend point in the cab. Five eighteen is just timeless. I think it'll be 60 years old and you wouldn't blink at it if you drove by it. Looks as modern, relevant, and current as any machine ever made. I like the deer. I had a 540, Dad and I. The deer just had a little bit too much nose, like a BM Volvo 860 or 861 back in the 70s. It's just a little too round, a little too big, stuck out a little too far. I'm sure the deer got teased in school for that, having a big nose. Boy, these would be gold today. Lots of people looking for old trucks, pickups. That's not a gorgeous Pacific. Okay, those were one pile. We have seven minutes. Pull up this one. And BC has a few different forest types. This here, I'm just, I live down on the south coast, but I associate with a coastal timber, not these tall you know, spruce and pine stuff that doesn't grow down here. But that's like all feller buncher sort of type material. Just totally different stands. They're not gonna have the five and six foot Douglas fir and 16 foot red cedars. Sixteen G, that was the big one. You could live in that. That thing is big. Too big. They were heavy. Caterpillar was the dealer for those because I remember going to one of their demo days in the early eighties. And they had them on display and they were de demonstrating them. Well, oh, that's, oh, I'd say that's cool. I like link belts. That's neat. 5,000. And that's neat too. Favoritism zoom in shot here. I never liked when people park an excavator that way. It just looks so limp-wristed and just, just looks so goofy. It's always taught to do this kind of thing or park them in a way which there was no leftover hydraulic pressure on them or they weren't going to bleed and have pressure on the seals and backup rings and all that overnight. At the end of the night, my dad always told me, end of the night, end of the day when we'd park something, it always, because there were manual valve body machines then, or valve spools, valves, it was always push down and let everything go, and make that sound, and get all the pressure out of the valve banks. 
Make sure the bucket was sinked into the ground so the cylinder wasn't bearing the weight. All made sense. I assumed everybody learned that, but the older I got and the more I got into the equipment business, the less I realized anybody's dad taught them anything. No offense, there's some good guys out there, but I'll not digress or I'll lose subscribers. So. There is a term called meat in the seat, though, and I'm a believer in it. I've been convinced it's real. I have all kinds of views. I try and keep them a little bit equipment related. A low bed mixer. Okay, thanks for enduring.